So today, and as well as a couple other videos down the line, I'm actually going to take you guys through my whole high school experience. Oh god. What's going on guys, Justin here, and I finally got my first video request from a viewer. So shout out to Lillian Cod who asked me to make a video about my high school experience. And it seemed like Lillian was no joke about this. She wanted to know everything from how was it like, how was I in high school, my love life, everything. I can't simply squeeze four years of high school experience into one video. So I'm gonna split this into three videos. This video, I'm going to tell you guys about the high school I went to and I'm going to share with you guys my freshman year of high school. Second video, I'm going to show you guys my sophomore and junior year of high school because not really much happened in those two years. <laughs> and the third video, oh my god, my senior year of high school, which honestly looking back at it was kind of bananas. Anyways guys, let's get right to it. So before I could take you guys into my freshman year of high school, I want to take you guys like a month before I started going there. So the high school I went to is named Crystal Ray High School. It's here in New York City, specifically in Manhattan. It is a Jesuit high school and it is not your typical private type of high school. It's not your typical high school period. Essentially what makes this school different from most is the fact that they have a corporate work study program. So what that means is students will go to school four days out of the week. But for the fifth day, you're actually gonna be working at some pretty big companies. I'm talking about JP Morgan Chase, White and Case, Sandler O'Neill and Partners. We even had people work for Major League Soccer. And when that was announced, it was like the most covenant job for every student there. So because the school actually has you working in some pretty top name companies, they needed to make sure that you were prepared to work in that kind of environment. So the summer before your freshman year or your sophomore year, if you was a transfer, you had to go what was known as business boot camp. In this business boot camp, you're actually taking like multiple classes almost. And it's like math, it's English class. Those are only two regular school classes you have. Then it's three business boot camp workshops if i remember this was like four years ago when i went so in these workshops you were learning like how to conduct yourself in a professional manner how to answer the phones in a professional manner how to dress in a professional manner all of that stuff because this was something that you really had to know for these companies like they were strictly with this dress code speaking of being strict boy they was crazy about the dress code just the school in general, not just the boot camp. Literally, you got in trouble for not wearing a belt. Teachers or faculty members thought like your pants or ladies, your skirts, anything that you was wearing was a little tight or a little too baggy. If you didn't have a tie on, you got in trouble. And the biggest one that I found most ridiculous was the fact that you weren't allowed to have any facial hair whatsoever. I can't even grow facial hair that much. Like I can grow this and this little thing up here. This little thing has gotten me in trouble more times than anything else in that school. But going to my freshman year. So I was a very reserved, very quiet type of person when I got to high school. I came to that school with a couple of friends from my middle school days. I think there was like three or four friends of mine. So I thought I was good on friends. I thought, you know, I was going to hang out with them, you know, spend the next four years with those guys and everything would be perfect. That, that, that didn't happen at all. Even though that there are four classes in high school, your freshmen, sophomore, juniors, seniors, there was actually classes within those as well so you had for instance f1 which was freshman one who are the honor students then you got f a b and c so i was in f a which was like right below the honors class like i said and my friends were actually like an f b and some of them even fc so we had different classes 
We had different lunch schedules. I did not see them as often as I thought I would. So I had to like break out of that little silent thing. I had to make a couple of friends. And there was one instance that made me make a lot of guy friends very quickly. So what had happened was I was in math class, which was my last class of the day. My principal and a couple of other faculty members said after class, all the girls can go home, all the boys have to stay. And we're wondering, why are you telling all the boys that they have to stay in class and you're letting the girls go home? After class ended, all the girls went home. They picked up the boys in my class and all the other freshman classes and put us into one room on the fourth floor. We were trying to figure out why we was there. Like nobody said anything to us. They literally put us in that room, closed the door, and that was it. A couple minutes passed and somebody, one of the teachers came into the room and told us, oh, something happened, an incident happened, and we want the perpetrators to confess to it. Not knowing what happened. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what perpetrators, what crime, like, this was like the ultimate lockdown. It's like we were all in prison. Come to find out what actually happened was somebody, supposedly it was a freshman guy, went into the boys' bathroom. Guys, you know, if you go to a men's room, between the urinals, there's usually like a little wall. So, you know, you don't go over it and start looking at people's junk. Somebody actually broke one of those walls. And I'm still trying to figure out to this day how they was able to do that. The school was not that old when I was a freshman. They were like only four years old. So those walls were relatively new. It must have took a lot of force for a 14 or 15 year old guy to break that. They had us locked in that room for around two hours. Um, class ended at 2.55. So we didn't leave till almost four or five o'clock. All that time, we were just sitting there. The teachers left us alone in there because they wanted somebody to either confess or someone to snitch. And I think one of the weirdest parts about it was one of my classmates, who is literally like the definition of a class clown, actually tried to like walk out of the room at one point and teacher stopped him really quick and sent him right back in. After the two hours of basic lockdown, they let us out. They said something about how they were gonna cancel all of the sporting events that we had, like the soccer team was gonna forfeit their first game, how there wasn't gonna be a flag football team like we planned to have it, which we never got in those four years that I've been there. Anyways, I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad about it. I kinda am mad about it. I think the worst part about that whole time was when I left, I checked my phone. I got 20 missed calls from my grandmother and from my father. You guys know how this is. When you have a missed call from your parents, you're gonna be dead when you get home. If you miss one call, you're dead when you get home. If you miss 20, they already got an Amber Alert, an APB on you, cops are already probably looking for you somewhere. I called waiting for the worst like expecting the worst thing. I was expecting to get yelled at, everything, and kind of did a little because my grandma was just worried sick when I she finally picked up the phone. I explained to her what happened. I explained to her that the school had all the guys in lockdown and she flipped out, not on me, but she wanted to flip out on the school because they didn't tell any parents that all the guys were gonna be locked down until like five o'clock. Dude, a word to the wise to any schools, if you're gonna lock down students um, in a day and age where kids are really getting kidnapped, you might wanna tell the parents what's going on. But before this video gets longer, I'm just gonna share one more thing and that was my job for freshman year. My job was in the human resources department at Sandler O'Neill and Partners. HR, I was an assistant, I had my own little four person cubicle and all I really had to do was make copies of people's passports, create some new hire booklets and stuff like that. When I tell you guys I hated that job, it was like 
It's still like the worst job I had in my four years at that school. I think the main thing that really irked me about that job was the fact that my supervisor at the time always compared me to the other freshmen from the honors class who worked in the same job as me. Every time I didn't know how to do something or every time I would like ask for help learning how to do something, it used to always be, well, how come this person knows how to do it and you don't? And I did not know how to answer that. I They, they almost made me feel stupid at one point. I survived my year over there and I think that was like one of the first jobs that made me realize what I did not want to do in life and that was stay in a cubicle. And that's actually where I'm gonna end this video. Guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, do me a favor, follow that blue arrow over here and hit that like button. If you guys are new to the channel, I would love to keep you as subscribers, so follow that red arrow that's right there. I keep forgetting where these two arrows are and hit that subscribe button. If you guys want to follow me on any social media platforms, I have those on the bottom right here and I have some previous videos, I believe, up here. With that said, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Justin, and stay tuned for part two, which is my sophomore and junior years of high school.